Hey everyone! So with the Black Widow movie coming out one day, I thought it might be fun for us to take a look at our all-time greatest villains out there. Before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more top 10 videos and other comic book related content. Number 10, Snapdragon. First up is a pretty obscure choice in the world of Black Widow villains. Snapdragon, real name Shioki Sanada, went up against Black Widow as a then new villain hired along with an entire roster of other mercenaries to take on Natasha Romanov in a really cool story called The Web of Intrigue. Though Snapdragon would return in later stories, she never would again face Black Widow. So it's a relatively small role relative to the other villains that will be featured in this top 10. But a sort of recurring theme in this video is going to be that the amount we see of a villain doesn't necessarily trump the execution of said villain. Meaning that a villain we've seen fight Black Widow a lot doesn't automatically beat a villain who's battled Natasha in a really cool way. And in the case of Snapdragon, this is how the villain secured a spot among my favorites among Black Widow's enemies, even though she barely qualifies as one. Because check out this amazing battle scene. It's hard to convey the full brilliance of this scene outside of comic book form, but by using an infrared sensor, Snapdragon is just able to beat Black Widow to a pulp in the dark. It's one hell of a setup, establishing Natasha is going up against a level of force that at the time she hadn't before, especially considering that Snapdragon is basically just a powerful underling within the story and context of Web of Intrigue meaning that Snapdragon's kind of just setting up an even bigger threat we'll talk about a little later. It's one hell of an accomplishment to have just one fight done so well that it basically makes Snapdragon one of my favorite Black Widow villains out there, but thanks to Ralph Macchio, George Perez, Al Milgram, and Bob Sharon, this scene was so well executed it's one of my all-time favorite fights involving Black Widow. The use of darkness to convey how off-guard Natasha is in this scene and how strong Snapdragon really is, is very, very well done. And like any good villain, it makes Natasha's eventual victory as a superhero that much more impressive. Number 9. The Crimson Dynamo While I try to avoid villains more commonly associated with other characters, since I feel the focus should be more on those exclusively tied to Black Widow where possible, villains aren't always exclusive in general within the world of superheroes, and in the case of Crimson Dynamo, there's a lot between this villain identity and Natasha that really works. For one thing, Natasha's long ties to the Soviet Union and later Russia, her often being at odds with the various men who have been Crimson Dynamo over the years, makes a lot of sense to me. Plus, unlike Iron Man, Natasha doesn't have the benefit of a power suit herself, so I feel like it's a much bigger challenge for her to take on the Crimson Dynamo compared to Tony Stark. Widow has faced many iterations of the Crimson Dynamo over the years, along with many versions of the suit. In at least one instance, the Crimson Dynamo had a personal history with her longtime contact and close friend Ivan Petrovich Bezukov, but more often than not, Natasha has no idea who is behind the armor or what the armor is actually capable of at any given moment in a fight, and has to adjust her tactics and react accordingly as she figures this stuff out in any given battle. That makes for a great, reliable enemy, though it feels like Crimson Dynamo never really makes for much more than a secondary threat in most Black Widow stories, as he is usually working on behalf of a bigger villain or as part of some kind of villain team-up. As such, Crimson Dynamo makes for a pretty great Black Widow villain, but without any key moments or big story arcs between them, he's hardly her greatest enemy either. Number 8, Elektra. So yes, while I did try to avoid other characters' villains in this top 10, it's very much impossible with Black Widow, and would also be a little dishonest not to include at least some mention of her long history with characters like Daredevil, as well as maybe even throwing in an honorable mention for other familiar villains along these lines like Viper and Bullseye. Because Natasha is so heavily associated with Daredevil, the original champions, and the Avengers, she has often been at odds with a lot of different villains, including quite a few associated with other characters. Mostly those battles have been one-offs and generally don't involve any specific animosity directed at Widow over Daredevil or whatever 
group Natasha might be working with at any given moment. However, one character that really stands out, a little separate from all of that, and to be fair, is only ever sometimes a villain, would be Elektra. Not only have they battled at least a few times over the years, but due to their shared history with Matt Murdock, there's a lot of sort of underlying tension, history, and baggage between these two women that works well in informing any potential conflict between them. It was her early appearances in the Daredevil comics that sort of cemented Black Widow as a major Marvel character, and a consistent presence in the comics. In doing so, her and Daredevil have gained this long and complex history together that not only informs a lot of Natasha's overall history, but has also led to her sort of inheriting quite a few of Matt's villains over the years. It makes sense, they have worked so closely together that they would share a great deal of enemies at this point, and one such enemy that really stood out to me was Elektra, whose well-established abilities also made for a great threat to Black Widow. And they have a sort of inner darkness and turmoil going on, and a shared history of assassination that makes for a really important personal connection that works well for any villain too. She's a particularly good enemy for Natasha, but hardly the only one to have spun out of Romanoff's time working with Murdoch. Number 7, Molot Boga. Next up is another character that only appeared in one story, but was part of a top tier Black Widow series, and Molot Boga has a lot going for him as a cool enemy of Black Widow. For one thing, his creators Nathan Edmondson and Phil Noyo could do an amazing job at giving this guy this huge presence and making him into a big and deadly threat against Widow, which she must go up against. He's got this whole religious motif going on, and thanks to Phil Noto's paintings, just this phenomenal sense of power to him few other Black Widow villains have. Molot has this amazing battle where he nearly takes out a plane, and then returns at the end of his story arc all remodeled with these steel implants. It was all done pretty well, although I definitely have a preference for his initial appearance over the whole steel implant thing. But regardless, he's yet another good example of how a good and memorable execution can trump an ongoing presence to a degree, as Boga was one of the first villains I thought of when compiling my top 10. Number 6, Headmistress Anya. Natasha Romanov first encountered Anya as a young woman back when Natasha was first being trained as part of the Red Room Academy. Years later, Anya would return as head of something called the Dark Room, a similar academy to the Red Room, but seemed to be a lot more keen on using children as assassins. As a result, Anya became a new head of this organization, while Widow became a natural enemy of all of them. This has led to a couple of encounters. The first one was good, but Black Widow and Anya actually didn't fight very much in it, Anya sort of first revealed herself with the original Red Room headmistress, and the two women decided to spare Black Widow even under the assumption she would eventually return to face the Dark Room at full strength. Natasha did, but there wasn't much to any of that in terms of a meaningful conflict between Anya and Widow, just a whole bunch of angst and anger. I don't think it would have been enough to justify including Anya on this top 10. But then she returned in a later story and properly went up against Black Widow as a villain. It was a really well done part of the Chris Samney and Mark Wade run of Black Widow. Ultimately, Anya was defeated and arrested by S.H.I.E.L.D. in an extremely well done moment where Widow turned Anya's own students against her. That moment's so good because it evokes everything great about these two characters, but also where Widows come. It might be the most heroic moment in Black Widow's history as a character. They have this shared history, but their characters went in very different directions in life. Late in the development of Black Widow's character, she's no longer this heartless villain. And even on her worst day, would never brainwash a bunch of kids into becoming assassins like Anya did. Instead, Natasha showed these very dark children a very different direction they could go in life, and that they didn't have to become assassins. These children saw something in Natasha that Anya sorely lacked, and Widow might not even be willing to admit about herself to begin with. After all her time working at the side of Daredevil, the Avengers, and even Hawkeye, Black Widow has become a true superhero more than anything else. And as a villain, Anya showed that better than any other. Number 5, Rose. And here we have, at a shockingly high position, the last villain to only ever appear in just one story. The nature of her work in history as both a spy and an assassin 
means Black Widow shares something in common with the Punisher in that a lot of Natasha's enemies don't tend to stay alive long enough to be a meaningful recurring threat. The willingness to use lethal force means that a lot of villains only get to go up against Natasha once, and their deaths hardly ever bother or weigh on Black Widow much at all, making them often pretty inconsequential in terms of their impact on her character, and in general such villains and their deaths are not the focus or point of those Black Widow stories. In fact, out of all Black Widow comics out there in the world, only a handful of villain deaths have ever had any sort of impact on Natasha or any real reaction at all. That's not a criticism of her character, that's the writers doing a really good job with her character and keeping her true to her own history. But none of that's quite true when it comes to Rose, a powerful telepath who enjoyed being a profoundly violent serial killer. This is all part of what might be my favorite Black Widow graphic novel, Daredevil Black Widow Abattoir. Don't let the story name fool you either, Rose is a robustly Black Widow villain, far more than she could be considered an enemy of Daredevil, because Natasha is forced to spend a lot of time with Rose in this story, watching the brutal way this woman forces other people to slaughter one another by using her powers. It's raw, totally amazing stuff. And then Rose starts using her powers on Widow, taking her through Rose's dark history and showing the woman how the telepath came to be. As such, Natasha becomes so overly familiar with the woman, by the time Rose is finally, and to be fair, rightfully killed, Romanov breaks down in tears, admonishing herself for feeling this way, but feeling that way just the same. The events of this story get a huge reaction out of Black Widow that is very, very rare to see. Best of all, it was done in a way that felt still true to Natasha's character and was totally, completely, robustly earned. As I said before, by and large, execution always beats exposure. We didn't get a lot of exposure with Rose and she was never going to be this huge character, but she left a big impression on me in spite of her limited appearances. And luckily I'm not the only one who's recognized this. I've seen her mentioned as a cool Black Widow villain before on other sites and in other lists. And I think even though her role in Natasha's life and history as Black Widow is small, she's still one of the best villains the Black Widow has ever gone up against. Number 4. Black Widow, Yelena Boleva I'm sure this one being present on the top 10 isn't a surprise to anybody, but it might surprise you that I haven't ranked her a little higher. Yelena Boleva is a fellow graduate of the Red Room. However, Yelena is a little distinct in that she was the first person to graduate with higher scores out of the Academy than Natasha. That's why Yelena initially became the new Black Widow and calls herself that, and it informs a lot of Yelena's need to prove herself superior to Natasha in the early days, but in a lot of moments in her history as a character. Out of all the Black Widow villains out there, Yelena is most easily defined as Natasha's outright rival, and is a very valuable villain because of that. They have this cool competitive relationship, meaning that sometimes Yelena can be counted on as a sort of ally, while other times she's an outright enemy. Her status as a freelancer and general loyalty to Russia means she can't always be counted on as a friend, but isn't always hostile to Natasha either. I like complicated characters such as this, which don't really fit the traditional villain model. And like other characters we talked about so far, that shared sense of history really helps to play up Yelena's sense of being a compelling character to go up against Natasha. It worked well in a number of stories over the years, including one that stands out where Yelena joined with this whole aim group and plan during Natasha's time with the Sacred Avengers. Yelena worked so well I had initially put her at number one, but I knocked her down a few spots to this ranking because though Yelena is absolutely one of the most frequent Black Widow villains out there, she has a few traits that gave me pause. For one thing, perhaps the most important thing, it's really not all that exciting to have yet another Marvel villain just be an evil version of the same superhero. For another thing, Natasha isn't always an enemy to Yelena. They have worked together quite a few times in the past. And finally, Yelena just doesn't have the same degree of emotional resonance Natasha has with some of the other villains we're about to talk about on this top 10. At the end of the day, while I think Yelena cares a great deal about Natasha, I don't think those feelings are returned to the same level, and certainly not compared to the top three we're going to talk about. Don't get me wrong, Yelena is ranked number four and is still a valuable part of Black Widow history, 
this is a high spot for her character to achieve, especially keeping in mind that she has value beyond being a Black Widow villain. I think it's smart of the MCU to use her as a sort of potential future Black Widow while also including her in the upcoming Black Widow movie. That works well because Yelena is distinct and not just a carbon copy of Natasha either. This is observed in their second story together. Yelena views herself as a Russian patriot and superhero, giving her a sense of determination, confidence, and self-righteousness that Natasha doesn't share. Romanov, in spite of her long history with working with other superheroes, and like I said, very much behaves and appears like a superhero to others, especially in more recent years, has never really viewed herself like that and never really been comfortable with that label. It speaks a lot to the difference between Natasha and Yelena and why there's value in having these two very different Black Widows especially when they can occasionally be counted on as enemies of one another. Number 3. Red Guardian, Ronin. Alexei Shtoskov. And now we get into a character that's a real heavy hitter in the history of Natasha Romanov. Though Natasha has only battled Alexei a handful of times, he is one of the most common villains you will see in any given Black Widow comic due to the sheer frequency in which he shows up in flashbacks dealing with her character. For those that don't know, Red Guardian is a sort of Russian equivalent to Captain America. And Alexei Shostakov is Natasha's ex-husband, a man who used to carry on that mantle. His early brainwashing and attack on Natasha, along with the rest of the Avengers, was an essential part of how Black Widow came to be working at the side of the heroes and S.H.I.E.L.D. As such, his behavior at the time and former marriage to Black Widow weighs heavily on Natasha's heart in character history, especially in her early days, but even in comics published as recently as last year. Alexei and his separation from Widow really seem to define her life outlook on the whole, and that personal touch has made him a very strong villain when he's shown up again in later stories. Whether it's some sort of robot duplicate, which I very much sort of lumped in as part of his character history here, or as Ronin, Alexei is always a powerful presence when he shows up because of his long and emotional history with Widow and her origin story. Though I do feel over the years Natasha has kind of grown past this a great deal. It feels like by the time he returned as Ronin, she easily came out on top of that encounter, having come a long way from her earliest days as a character when she was married to him. It just doesn't mean that much to her now that she's been through so much, and that feels appropriate given the character's history. That only makes me feel all the more certain he belongs here though, as the Red Guardian is such an important part of that character growth and history. It makes sense to me that Red Guardian will be a major character, and probably some form of antagonist, in the Black Widow movie. Alexei will be played by David Harbour too, who I really like and think will do a good job with this. Unlike in the comics, the MCU version apparently is going to have him be more of a father figure to both Yelena and Natasha, instead of just Natasha's husband, which is fine, they're kind of bridging a lot of Natasha's character history together into one movie. And as long as there's some sort of emotional connection there, that's what's important. This is a cool villain, and one of the most important ones in the history of Black Widow. Yet we still haven't covered her greatest and most important enemies just yet. Number 2 the indestructible man, Damon Dran. So we've covered Yelena, a character that is pretty easily Natasha's greatest rival. But if she has an archenemy, a nemesis if you will, it's probably Damon Dran. Black Widow has faced this man on three different occasions, making him not only one of her most consistent enemies, but for whatever reason, all three of these stories happen to be some of my favorite Black Widow comics. The first time Widow went up against Damon Tran was back in her earliest days of working with Daredevil, where Damon was robustly defeated and his hatred towards Natasha first began. He then came up with a complicated revenge scheme that involved hiring Snapdragon and a bunch of other villains, before finally returning years later with Molot Boga in tow for yet another awesome plan of revenge. If you've noticed and are connecting the dots there, that means Widow's adventures battling the indestructible man are so good in my eyes that two of his henchmen are cool enough to have made it to this top 10. Damon's been a really well used character because of all this, because otherwise he's a pretty standard villain. I say that because his powers aren't all that exciting. Thanks to some experiments, he's effectively unkillable. 
which makes him a great recurring villain, because he can keep coming back, but isn't the most exciting superpower out there either. I really like this villain and think he's Natasha's greatest and most consistent enemy. Only one other, in my opinion, topples Damon Dran, and that's because he's the only villain that has managed to exact a level of devastation on Natasha's personal life that Dran could only ever dream of. Number 1. Ivan Petrovich Bezukov This one was rough for Natasha. Go back and read just about any old comic featuring Black Widow, or even any comic flashing back to her earliest days working with other superheroes. And you're going to see Ivan sooner or later. This man is by far the closest thing Natasha has to a father, having been her handler since her earliest days working out of the Red Room. He was with her when she first defected from the USSR, he was there throughout her earliest time working at Daredevil's side, and was a big part of her leading the first iteration of the Champions. Ivan was there through thick and thin. He cared about her, looked out for her, and went to great lengths to ensure her well-being. Over time, he sort of faded away as a character in Natasha's life, only to eventually return, forcibly remade into a cyborg and Natasha's enemy. Now aside from the kind of kooky and colorful cyborg look, that betrayal bit always sort of felt inevitable to me, even from those earliest comics where they were working together. Natasha's life has always been that of deceit, betrayal, and espionage. Her real name isn't even Natasha. So her always being able to count on Ivan never really felt like a true guarantee. And sooner or later, that story was going to end badly. If he wasn't going to turn on her, he was going to be forced to turn on her. And if that wasn't going to happen, he was probably going to end up being violently killed instead. It really felt like something like this was always going to happen eventually. What really makes the difference, and what puts him at number one, is how well it was handled. Aside from a couple of issues I have with his final form looking a little goofy, don't let that fool you. His betrayal was handled really well in the limited series Black Widow Deadly Origin. I never seen her more devastated than when she basically has to kill Ivan. But given this character's history with her and how he was with her since the beginning, that moment felt well earned and any other reaction would have been inappropriate. It should have left her devastated and and it really did feel like that's how Natasha felt after this particular adventure. This was the closest thing to family she had, and she had to kill the man with her bare hands. Given the sheer presence of this character in Widow's earliest days, it's hard to believe she'll ever face an enemy that can ever have that kind of emotional effect on her ever again. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, you'll notice there's no Taskmaster on here. He is supposed to be a villain in the Black Widow movie, but... Uh, they haven't really ever fought much in the comics before. If anything, they were actually on the Secret Avengers team together. Kind of. That was complicated. But they were. They did work together during all of that. So we'll have to see when the movie comes out if that would influence my list somehow one way or another. I would argue it could if the movie's strong enough that it has an effect on me and the overall history and outlook of Black Widow's character, then yeah, I'd be willing to change around my rankings of these, so uh, we'll have to see when that Black Widow movie happens to come out. Let me know what you guys think, and if there's any villains you feel I missed or left out, uh, ones that I should have included for one reason or another. Thanks for watching this video, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.